All right, so today in reading, um, what we ended up doing is we went over what is on page 23 in our notebooks. Um, so you're not, if you don't have your notebook with you, um, this is what's on page 23. We actually ended up talking about, this is plot um, and story elements, but we actually ended up talking about this um, in the beginning of the school year um, and how every fiction book is set up this way. So we have exposition, um, and it goes to conflict because that's what's next here. And then this rising action, resolution to conflict, falling action, and then resolution to story. Um, and so essentially what this does is um, it just is how every fiction book is set up. Um, so I'll kind of briefly go through with this with you. Um, we're going to come back to this multiple times in class. But um, so the first part is you have the um, exposition. This is basically who are the characters and what are they doing? Where are they at? That kind of thing. That's the boring part. Um, so it's introducing who those characters are. Um, what they're doing, um, and then also where the story is being taken place. Then it moves into the conflict. Conflict looks like this. Um, this would more so go with like the character wants or doesn't want something, um, but then something is in the way of that. Um, so you have to make sure that you say what is in the way for them getting what they want, because if they just want something, that's not a conflict. But as soon as something's in the way for them to get what they want or don't want, um, that becomes a conflict. So there's a problem in the piece, character stressed about something. That conflict could be internal or it could be external. Okay, um, then we move up to do the rising action. Rising action is going to be the majority of a story. And the reason why that is, is like if you think about riding a bike up a hill, it takes a lot longer to ride that bike all the way up the hill than it does to come down really fast. Okay, so rising action um, is the majority of the story. A lot of things happen. They're trying to solve that conflict. Um, and they're just, they're, they're trying to solve that conflict. There's major events that happen that kind of keep the story going. Okay. Um, then we get to resolution of conflict. Resolution of conflict is when the conflict is no longer an issue. So these two things are to make sure to connect. That's why it says, do these match? They need to. Okay. Because whatever that conflict is, like the character wants or doesn't want something, when is that no longer an issue? Okay, so that's there. And then it goes down to falling action. Falling action is checking in with all the characters to make sure everyone is okay, um, that kind of thing. Then we have the last thing, which is resolution of story. It's what takes place at the very, very end of the story. Okay, so I'm going to give you um, an explanation on this. And this is actually on the back on page 22. Sorry, I'm moving my things all around. So this is on the back of page 22. Um, very similar, but I'm going to kind of go through a couple of these. You're going to be able to see um, on here that there's actually three different examples. So we have um, Nemo, we find Nemo, and then we have Frozen, and then we have Roller Coaster Ride. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go through the Roller Coaster Ride because that's kind of a fun example to go through. So it, like for me, um, this summer I actually went to um, Worlds of Fun and I rode Mamba. I have not ridden that ride in a really, really long time. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through that by using the story elements in the plot chart. Okay, so I decided I was going to go on the Mamba. So what I did is I got into the seat. Like I got up there, I stood in line, all that kind of stuff. But then I sat down in the seat, I buckled, and I waited for everybody else to kind of get ready. Something I was listening to, I was listening to the workers and saying, hey, you can't wear your hat. Make sure that, that you take that off. Make sure you can secure all your items, all that kind of stuff. So that's the exposition. I am on the ride, that kind of stuff. Okay, then it gets to the conflict. The conflict for me for that one was it was an internal conflict. I was scared. And the ride is actually starting. Like, oh my gosh, like this is going to happen. I'm going to go through writing this ride. Okay, so that is the conflict. Okay, and in that way too, like I wanted the ride to be over, but the ride wasn't going to be over yet because it was not over. Okay, so I had that internal, I was scared of it. Okay, then we get to rising action. This is the majority of the ride. Um, Essentially, I'm going to go up the hill, down or down the main hill, which, again, I couldn't breathe. I had to catch my breath when I kind of went up another hill again. Um, but then I go around the little um, circular portion of it, and then I get over to, like, the little bumps um, on the other side. And so me riding and doing all of that, essentially the whole ride is the rising action. I'm still scared the whole time. The conflict is not resolved because the ride's not over yet because I'm not, like, I'm not scared anymore. Or I mean, I'm still scared. Sorry. Okay. So then I get to what happens is the resolution of conflict. That resolution of conflict is like that last portion when you ride the Mamba. Um, as it slows you down, 
it's actually kind of a jarring experience. You kind of have to brace yourself for it, but it slows down and I braced myself. And then like at that point, I was not going fast anymore. So for me, I was no longer scared. I had ridden the ride. The ride was over essentially. And that's because when it's the resolution of the conflict. Okay. So then you go to the following action. The following action is essentially like it's getting time to leave. So as I'm riding mom, the Mamba and it, after I stopped, it kind of goes really slowly back into the place where I can get off. That's the falling action. I've kind of come to terms that I'm okay. I survived the ride, that kind of thing. And then the resolution story is that I get off the ride. Okay. So that would be like the plot chart for me riding a, a roller coaster. Okay. So what we're going to do is we actually wrote or read two different books um, last week in class. And we're going to use one of them today. And we are essentially going to be writing on this sheet of paper. Now, for those of you who do not or who are not here and you don't have your notebook, um, you're going to want to write this a little bit differently. You can draw it like this. That's fine. You don't necessarily have to. Um, but you're going to get a piece of paper like this and just or when you get back from school. Or you can make one like this. Or if you want to just have one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. Excuse me. If you just want to draw six boxes on a separate sheet of paper and make sure to label them correctly, you can do that as well. Okay. All right. So um, the one that we are going to do is Mother Bruce. Um, so you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and do this with you. So I'm just going to assume that you do not have the pink piece of paper or a chart like that and that you just have a sheet of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do this to the side, um, just like you would actually end up doing it at home. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put down Mother Bruce at the top because that is the title of what we're going to do today. And then we can even put um, plot slash story elements. So if you make the top of your sheet look like that, you'll be good to go. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just make those six boxes so that way we have it. So I'm just going to draw a line down the middle. And then I'm going to make six boxes about the same size. That way I have that there. Okay. So you're going to want to do the same thing on your sheet of paper. And then we'll go ahead and label it this way. So, um, what should I do? I'm sorry, I'm thinking. We'll just go this way. Um, I kind of want you to have that same feel. I'm going to take a pencil. And I want you to kind of have the same feel in the sense of how this is working. I'm sorry, I'm trying to decide what I want you to do. So if you did exposition, conflict. Okay. Um, sorry, stick with me. I'm almost there. I'm trying to figure out how I want to make sure this connects. Okay. Um, all right. So on this sheet of paper, um, what I would do, and I don't know, it's kind of up to you on how you want to do this. Maybe at the very top, um, you could draw your little line like this to do the plot chart. So that way you kind of see it. Like that's the plot chart that we have here. Okay, so you can just draw yourself a little plot chart so that, you, that way you know how it's supposed to go. Um, that part is just right here. So if you want to draw that, great. Something else you could also do, because we're going to go in this order, is essentially this is going to be like number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want you to understand that it has a feel like this. Okay, so it kind of comes up and down. Like I... We're just going to go with this. If it doesn't work, I will sort you out when you come back to school. Okay. All right. Um, so what I want you to do is we're going to kind of go through this. We're going to um, label the boxes and we're going to kind of talk about Mother Bruce. Um, again, that one looked like this. This is the one that I read in class. Um, I will go through this as well as we're kind of going into it. Um, but here's what I want you to do. So number one, we're going to say this is the exposition. And the exposition is the place where we're talking about um, characters and setting and all that. Um, number two is going to be conflict. Number three is going to be rising action. Number four is going to be resolution to conflict. 
Number five is going to be falling action. Number six is going to be um, resolution to story. All right, so um, you'll make sure your boxes look like that, and then we're going to kind of talk through this. We're going to add some things to it. If at any point you need to pause, you can do that. Just know this to hit pause, and you always come back, and I'll be there. Okay, so exposition. Um, using page 22 to help me and guide me as I'm kind of talking you through this. Um, exposition is who is doing what and where. This is often the boring part. So if I think about Mother Bruce, in the very beginning... I know that Bruce is grumpy. I also know that he doesn't like a lot of things. Um, and I also know that he wants to make him something to eat. Okay? So Bruce is wanting to make eggs. So I'm going to write this. Bruce is making eggs in the woods. You can even say at his house if you want. I'll just leave it short and simple right there. Okay. Um, and then we're going to need geese in there at some point because we know that geese is also a character. Okay. All right. So make sure that's an exposition. All right. So um, he's going to make these eggs, and this, here's where the conflict starts. Conflict is next, okay? On this, you can even tell, like, he, these eggs hatched. They're saying, Mama, you can see on his face, he's not overly thrilled, and a lot of conflict comes when there is some sort of emotional, uh, a negative emotion, okay? So we're kind of learning what the conflict is, and it says right here, Bruce wanted hard-boiled eggs, not goslings, so that's another part of the issue there. Um, is that he wanted something to eat. He didn't want these goslings. Um, and so we're kind of getting to what the conflict actually is. Um, here's where we actually learn the full out conflict um, in the sense of what we're going to write here. Okay. So we're going to say that Bruce wanted the geese to go away. That is only part of the conflict. In order for us to have the other part of the conflict, we have to have the word but in there because the word but tells us that this is what is in the way. So I'm going to write it pretty big. Bruce wanted the geese to go away, but there's something that happened. Sorry. There's something that happens that is keeping that from happening. And it says right here, these goslings were saying, you're my mom, so I'm not going to leave you. So that is what's in the way of that. So, but geese thought Bruce was their, I'm going to use their words, mama. Okay? So I'm going to make sure to write that in there. So that is my conflict. Bruce wanted the geese to go away, but geese thought Bruce was their mama. So they're not going to go away. Okay? So now we get to the rising action. Again, if you need to pause, you can do that. Just do it whenever you need to. But rising action, this is the majority of the story. Just like how we did the whole roller, co roller coaster ride, that was the majority of the story is riding the whole roller coaster. So the rest of what's happening, you're going to choose two of them. I don't care which two you choose. So as I am talking... If you want to write the two that you're doing on here, I'll go ahead and put bullet points. You can just write two different things that happen for rising action. So I'm going to go ahead and just tell you some. If you want to take them, great. If you want to wait until I start writing it down, that's fine to you. Okay? So some of the ones that we have here, I'll kind of show you so you can see this. Um, this right here. He tried to take the geese back to the nest. That is rising action. Rising action is also that the geese followed him. Okay? And the geese yelled at him. Or sorry, not the geese. The Bruce yelled at the geese. Sorry. That's also rising action. Rising action, he got super angry with him. Rising action, he tried to run away from them. 
I'm sorry, hide from them. He tried to run away from them. That's all of rising action. Rising action. He tried to make the best of it. Tried to swim with them. He tried to paint with them. He tried to hold them. All of these are rising action. He tried to feed them. He took a nap with them. These are all rising action. He watched them grow up into adult geese. Okay, this is all rising action. Uh, the next part, oh, no, why I took that away, sorry. He realized, hey, yes, they can actually go. He tried to teach them how to fly once they were old enough. And when the whole teach them how to fly, he tried to slingshot them so they would fly. He tried to put them on planes so they would fly. All of this is rising action. Everything I've said so far is rising action. Okay? All right. So I'm going to take two of those examples, and I'm going to write them down. So I'm going to say for my first rising action that Bruce took geese back to nest. And then my second one is I'm going to say that Bruce tried to teach geese how to fly. So those are the two that I am going to use. Okay. If you chose two different ones, that's okay. Because there's a lot of rising action. All right. So then it gets down to the resolution. To the conflict. Now, this has to match the conflict. So Bruce wanted the geese to go away. Resolution of conflict is that he didn't get the geese to go away because he finally realized something. And that's kind of what happened here. Okay? So he's sitting here going, all right, we're going to get on the bus because I'm going to have to just migrate with you. So he kind of comes to the realization that they're not leaving. Okay? So he kind of had a change of heart, which you kind of think of dynamic character. So we could say Bruce realized geese not going away migrate with them to Miami okay that's what it says on here is that they're going to migrate to Miami okay all right, so he came to this realization. So this is what I'm putting in resolution and conflict. Bruce realized geese not going away. So they migrate with them to Miami. Okay? Then we get into falling action. Falling action is basically seeing that they're all okay. So as I'm looking at this, we have to just kind of talk about what they're doing at the beach. So we can just say they're at the beach in Miami relaxing. Okay? So we're going to say... Bruce and geese on beach relaxing. That's all I'm going to say for falling action because that's what's happening at the very or the very end, almost really close to the end. Okay, so Bruce and geese on beach relaxing. That's the falling action. That's what's happening. Let me get to the last part. Resolution to the story. Resolution to story is this. This is the very last thing that happened in the book. Is there is this baby sea turtle talking to a goose saying, Mama? All right. So we're going to say baby sea turtle thinks goose is its mama. Okay, so I'm going to write that on resolution to story. I'm going to go ahead and underline these so we're not a little confused here. Sorry, I'll get my hand out of the way in a second. All right, so you need to make sure that your sheet of paper looks like mine in the sense that you have all of those um, pieces there for you. Okay, so make sure those are all good to go. Um, and then the last thing we ended up talking about today um, is that this essentially is like a summary of the book. So when you get to your story elements in your plot chart and you um, write all those in, this is essentially a summary if we follow the, the plot chart. So if we start at number one, I'm just going to kind of read this. So Bruce is making eggs in the woods um, and there's geese. 
Bruce wanted the geese to go away, but geese thought Bruce was their mama. Bruce took geese back to nest. Bruce tried to teach geese how to fly. Bruce realized geese not going away, so they migrate with them to Miami. Bruce and geese on the beach relaxing. Um, and baby, turtle, baby sea turtle thinks goose is its mom. Okay, so that, I mean, that's essentially a summary to the story. Okay? All right, next, last thing that we're going to talk about is that we're going to talk about theme. And something else you're going to notice um, when you get back to school, too, is I'll talk about this. But on page 24 in your notebook, um, there's lots of different types of themes. And authors, especially for these little books, too, is that there's going to be a theme of some sort. A theme is like the moral or the lesson to the story. Um, it's why the author wrote that specific story. What is the author trying to get me as the reader to understand? Um, and a lot of it kind of goes, especially with this one, is that Bruce ended up changing his ways. Because at first he was like, nope, I don't want these geese. I don't want them. I don't want them. I don't want them. He tried to get rid of them. And they just weren't going. And so then he became this dynamic character in the sense that he changed on the inside. He goes, all right, if you're not going to change, I got to figure out how to change. I got to be able to be okay with what's going on. And so when I think about um, a topic, I think about change as my topic. And so what I'm going to do is I'm on page 24. I found the topic of change. And there's five different possible themes with change. So I'm going to read these to you and kind of talk through maybe one of them that kind of sticks out to me. Um, people can be afraid of change, but change will happen. It's impossible to be certain. It is possible to survive against all odds. The only thing we can count on is that things will change, beliefs, relationships, situations. And the last one is sometimes you have to accept what you cannot change. So when I think about this particular story with Mother Bruce, um, I think the bottom one um, kind of depicts a lot of what I think the author's trying to tell me as a reader is that sometimes there are going to be things in life then I have to just accept because I can't change it. Okay, so I'm going to set that to the side as well. And I'm going to write that on it here somewhere. Um, and I'm going to do it actually in a different color, um, just so it stands out a little bit to me. Uh, I'll just do it in this color. And I'm just going to write the word theme somewhere. And I have the most space looks like about here. So I'm just going to write theme down here, draw a line. And I'm going to write that theme that I just kind of came up with. So Sometimes you have to accept what you cannot change. Okay, so I want you to write that somewhere because I want that to be something else that um, you can kind of look at because um, we're going to come back to this. And we'll do another story on this as well. Okay. All right. So what I need for you to do, um, again, if you need to pause because you didn't get all that written down, you can do that. Um, but what you'll need to do is I want you to take a picture of the notes that you ended up taking today and you're going to email them to me so I can give you credit for doing it. Um, otherwise, um, what you'll do is you'll bring that sheet of paper um, with you back to class and we will tape it onto page um, 22 underneath. So that way you have access um, to what we did today in class with Mother Bruce. Okay. All right. So I'm looking for that email. Otherwise you are good to go for me. Make sure you read for about 20 ish minutes today. Um, and you'll be good to go.